Vox Lab. This is the Vox Lab Proxima Resin 3D Printer. It uses a 2K Mono LCD, which is excellent, and it is very, very, very cheap. Cheap? No, 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 it is very affordable. But should you buy it? I really appreciate VoxLab for sending this printer for me to reveal for free. I need to disclose that. And let me tell you, four months ago when I was opening the box, I was excited and a little bit worried. Like, I hope this is good. Yeah. Budget printer that I could recommend? I will spare you the suspense. It prints great. In fact, the VoxLab Proxima gets pretty much the same printing quality as the Mars 2, the Mars 2 Pro, the Creality Halt 1, and the Anycubic Photon Mono 2K printers considerably more expensive. I'm not telling these printers are all the same, but the most important component, the thing that masks, shapes the UV light coming from the bottom is the LCD. Not this, the one under the resin vat. And all these printers use the same LCD module. There are lots of things that I like on this printer and just a few things that I don't like. By the way, don't open the box from the bottom. It was silly of me. There is a bunch of stuff in here. My goodness, this is heavy. Resin printers are so well packed. Maybe too well. There is something here. Uh, sure, that's the build plate. And the more I printed with it, the more I liked it. Because of this curve in the top. The resin flows off very easily, and when it finishes printing, this side is pretty clean already. No resin on the edges, and the printing surface has excellent adhesion. I printed a bunch of stuff, and I had only one partial failure. The cover is not just for the resin smell, it protects the resin on the tank against external ultraviolet light and it works. Seriously, hear me out if you are just getting started. You need it on the printer, especially if you have any natural light in your room. The body of the vat is metal and it has these two latches or ears to fix it in place. It's not fancy, but I like it. You don't need to take the screws off. Just a few turns and it's done very fast and there is no risk of dropping the screws in the resin. There is one thing you need to be careful. The fat film is quite exposed. It is flush with the bottom. There is always the risk of some grain of salt, sand, you know, something on your table, cut or perforate the fab. I always lay it upside down, well, when there is no resin on it. The touchscreen is small, but it works well. It is resistive and I think that's ideal on a resin printer. You can use the tip of your nails, a stylus, anything actually. <laughs> See, I should have opened the box from the top. Somebody designed a place for everything in the box and I blew it. Anyway, a paper funnel, you need more. Gloves, you also need boxes of it. The keys to adjust the plate. The metal scraper, you will use a lot. But the plastic one that was meant to help you clean the fab, it's a bad idea. It can scratch or even puncture the fab. Our adapter is 12 volts. Be careful if you have other printers, not to mix them. The quick start guide is simple. It has some occasional weird translation, but the content is useful. I like the menu. Do you know what is missing? Flush cutting pliers to help you remove supports. All right, let's turn it on. Oh, the USB port is on the side. There are people that like it here because it would avoid accidents. The power switch is in the back. It's, it's a matter of taste. I would prefer everything in the front. The buzzer is super loud. <laughs> Everybody was sleeping. Luckily, you can switch the beep on and off. Homing, leveling the build plate, finding the ideal pressure, not to lose, not too tight, and setting Z to zero is just like any other resin printers. Tell me in the comments if you want me to make a video just about leveling the build plate. And as you can hear, the Z stepper motor is loud on this printer. To me, really, noise is the only issue, annoyance in this printer. Sure, if you are adventurous, this printer is simple to open. An easy mod would be installing a stepper damper, but I didn't try it myself yet. And if something happens to the USB port, it is also very easy to replace. VoxLab has their own resin brand, but any standard UV curing resin will work. My first print was the Deer Test model that comes in the pen drive, and I used the ABS-like gray resin. It printed beautifully. The surface of this model is like a mesh with 
tiny, tiny holes. Anyway, to get a perfect piece, you need to clean it really well and take off all this uncured resin, and the washing station helps a lot. Now it's clean. You can cure it on the sun, but it was night and I used a new V curing station from Elego. Wow, this is the type of thing, a mesh so thin that it's impossible to print on filament printers, at least not so clean. And that's why resin printers became so popular to print miniatures, especially for tabletop gaming. And I need to say again, the Vox Lab Proxima is one of the cheapest printers you can buy. But check this out! Isn't this bust super cool? And I printed it much smaller than the maximum build volume. About speed. In the resin world, it doesn't matter if what you're printing is simple or complex, if it is thin or wide. Each layer will take the same time to print. So, instead of printing just one item, the cool thing to do is to fill the build plate with stuff. And even more important, the Proxima has a mono LCD, and this is excellent. In the first old resin printers, they used the same color LCDs used in smartphones. And that was a problem, because in RGB screens, ultraviolet light can only pass through the blue elements. So, most of the light was actually wasted, and each layer needed like 8 seconds, 10 seconds to cure. But the Proxima has a newer LCD, made specifically for resin printers. Each pixel is a single element, with bigger aperture and no color filters. More than twice UV light can go through, and each layer now can be cured in just 2 or 3 seconds. So if you find the old color LCD resin printers, even if it's super cheap, don't buy that. Mono LCD is the real deal about printing mechanical, functional parts. Resin printers really shine when you need very small tolerances, like a tenth of a millimeter gap, and it delivers. No surprises, no sanding, it just fits. This is a nice printer to make prototypes. So, should you buy it? If you're a hobbyist getting started on a budget, Yes, the Proxima 2K prints great, it is very affordable, you won't regret, there are links in the description, buy it. If you are setting up a resin 3D printing farm, it also makes sense. Why would you buy only one printer when you could buy 10 printers? Now, if you do professional jewelry casting, filter casting, it will pay off to buy a higher resolution printer, like the Elego Mars 3 or the Frozen Sonic Mini 8K. Finally, if you are obsessed with resolution, visible voxels, calibration tests, and light reflection, you must watch my review of the Mars 3 right now. That's the Proxima! If you have any question, just write a comment, I read everything. And watch my review of the Mars 3. Take care and have fun 3D printing. Oh. <laughs>